Thank you for your interest in learning more about the important role that disaster case managers play in the recovery of survivors. I am Kathy Earle, Director of Disaster Response and U.S. Partner Relations for UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief. UMCOR has been the global humanitarian aid and development agency of the United Methodist Church for nearly 80 years. About 30 years ago, UMCOR was asked to fill the gap in survivor recovery by providing disaster case management and related training in addition to other recovery functions. Since then, UMCOR has trained thousands of dedicated volunteers and staff, just like you. Being a disaster case manager was one of the most meaningful, rewarding, and even challenging roles I have done. I hope this brief overview inspires you to live into your role in support of survivor recovery. Thank you for joining us in this vital work. Many disaster survivors recover on their own with little support, but disaster case managers seek to partner with the most vulnerable to identify and resource their recovery. This partnership, built upon mutual trust and respect, acts as a vehicle by which a survivor can access resources and services that promote healing and recovery after a disaster providing survivors with new resource mechanisms and skills to live with greater resiliency and abilities to face the next disaster. The goal of this presentation is to provide an understanding of disaster case management as a critical function in the context of long-term recovery for individuals and families impacted by disaster. If you're a disaster case manager or someone who works alongside disaster case managers, this presentation is for you. Debris. That's what we call what's left after a disaster has turned personal belongings, family heirlooms, and treasured memories into roadside trash. While initial steps may have been taken, much still needs to be done. Many people are able to manage recovery on their own, with their own funds, and with the help of friends and family, and under their own steam. But many are unable to make much progress without help. In the absence of quality coordination, however, there may be too much information being collected from survivors by too many different helpers, agencies, and organizations, who in turn share with too many external providers resulting in breaches of confidentiality and increased survivor frustration. Conversely, the lack of appropriate coordination and information sharing can result in duplication of benefits and services and in equitable access to services and resources. Further confusion arises when the voluntary sector fails to implement services in a manner that is consistent with existing standards and guidance of the National VOAD. Communities impacted by disaster face many challenges, and one of the most significant is how to support families whose recovery may depend on resources they cannot readily identify. Once the wind has died, the waters receded, and relief resource agencies begin to complete their missions and return home, a caring community begins to consider ways to support survivors who need extra help. Individual and family recovery may depend on knowledgeable, skilled, and caring individuals to walk alongside and advocate for them as they navigate the hurdles of their own complex recovery. The period after a disaster can oftentimes be confusing and overwhelming. Many times, the most valuable resources in a community are not things or money, but the caring, compassionate people who offer support, volunteer labor, and encouragement to those who have lost so much. Optimally, disaster case management begins with disaster casework in the relief phase, which provides early intervention to disaster survivors to address immediate and transitional needs. A disaster case worker reaches out to survivors to determine their immediate needs and, if necessary, link survivors to resources. Many national partners offer outreach and referral services, but local caring agencies and houses of worship can be most effective in this role because they understand the culture of the community and will be reassuring to survivors. While disaster case work seeks to stabilize a survivor by addressing basic needs, disaster case management in the recovery phase focuses on long-term solutions by working creatively to develop a recovery plan. Ideally, those clients identified through respectful conversations with various community partners have answered a few targeted questions to find out if the services or resources they need for their family's recovery are a match for the potential community and agency resources. Simply, the conversation centers around whether survivors want and need our help and whether the community has identified the resources they may need. When both answers are yes, 
survivors are linked to a disaster case manager. While disaster casework seeks to stabilize a survivor by addressing basic needs, disaster case management in the recovery phase focuses on long-term solutions by working creatively to develop a recovery plan. As the client navigates the path from relief to recovery, the disaster case manager will serve as the primary point of contact, advocating when necessary, linking the client to resources or services they may not know about, and helping to overcome barriers that may stand in the way of recovery. Successful partnerships respect the dignity of survivors and are built upon trust, mutual respect, and acknowledgement that recovery belongs to the survivor. Disaster case management is complex. It is described as a time-limited process that involves a partnership between a case manager and a disaster survivor, also known as a client. Remember, not every survivor needs or wants disaster case management. The great majority of survivors recover on their own or with relief and referral services alone, but for those who would benefit from disaster case management, the DCM process provides the case manager a tried and true way to move the client through recovery, and it all begins with outreach and screening. There are many ways to reach out to those impacted by disaster, multi-agency resource centers, media, telephone, billboards, information and referral, or simply community visiting. Hope begins with screening by a compassionate and skilled listener who follows up on the results from outreach. Screening is a fulcrum where respect, trust, and relationships are formed. The caseworker is listening to identify that disaster-related needs exist. The applicant fits the resources the local community can offer, and the applicant wants to partner with a DCM. A screen is not a comprehensive assessment and shouldn't be terribly invasive either. It asks only brief and targeted questions to glean preliminary information to determine if this person is a good fit for case management services. Screening gathers preliminary information and builds the groundwork for follow-up. Pressing clients at this point may alienate the very person who needs help the most. So, less is more at this point. If the applicant and the screener decide to move forward, be clear about what will happen next. This important start will begin to establish trust that will greatly enhance the next step, disaster case management. Once it's clear the applicant has disaster-related needs and has expressed an interest in partnering with a disaster case manager and there are identifiable recovery resources, the next step in the DCM process is intake during which agencies formally open a case, assign a DCM, and transition the survivor from applicant to client. Intake is not a moment in time. It begins the process to explain what disaster case management is, how DCMs and clients work together, begins the trust relationship, and provides reassurance about confidentiality. Clear expectations from the beginning help avoid heartaches later. It would not be surprising to encounter survivors who still have emergent needs at this point. An initial assessment is a window into a client's recovery. It's an opportunity for clients to share what daily life was like before the disaster and what their preferred scenario for recovery would be. During this conversation, the case manager and client will examine barriers, identify potential resources, and begin to create a realistic recovery plan. DCMs have a responsibility to each client to present a thoroughly vetted and reviewed recovery plan to funders and resource providers. Verification of a client's needs and resources assures funders that DCMs have done their due diligence. Each client should understand that every client will need to provide documentation to support their requests. The Disaster Recovery Partnership Plan is a living document that summarizes the activities and processes undertaken by the client and or the case manager in an order to achieve what have been identified as realistic and achievable goals. From the initial assessment, DCMs and clients identify problem areas or barriers to recover and a client-specific objective for each. Effective recovery plans should list action strategies, tasks, activities, and resources necessary to achieve each objective and identify who does what by when. 
The recovery plan can help guide DCMs to know when and where it is appropriate to advocate. Recovery plans are not set in granite. They can change with developing and newly identified needs. Managing expectations gives clients an understanding of what's possible. DCM, unlike charity, fully invests clients in their recovery. Often, clients just need a little boost to get themselves going in the right direction, and a well-written plan can achieve that. Undergirding everything about a recovery plan is the question. What does the client in this community need to recover from this disaster? As survivors consider recovery options alongside a well-informed DCM, the plan for recovery, and most of the steps along the way, belong in survivors' hands. Fixing the immediate damage or loss caused by the disaster is not the paramount goal. Empowering stronger survivors, better able to navigate their next crisis, is the goal. Along the way, homes may become more resilient. More importantly, people become more resilient. The case manager prepares to answer the question, how does the provision of this resource or service move the client toward recovery? When appropriate, the case manager works with the client to restore benefits, obtain verification, explore the potential consequences of choices, and work through ethical and process dilemmas. Case managers assist clients in identifying and assessing these resources, personal, communal, financial, and incorporating these into the client's road to recovery. The case manager never does for clients what they are able to do for themselves. Ethical dilemmas often revolve around perceptions of enabling clients to maintain dependence upon services versus empowering clients to take responsibility to the degree they are able. The recovery plan is the launch pad for clients and DCMs together to begin to implement recovery. The Long-Term Recovery Group's Funding Table, or Unmet Needs Table, provides a unified approach to resourcing clients' recovery needs. When every resource or referral has been explored, DCMs will bring the remaining unmet needs to funding sources, which often are gathered around a funding table, Unmet Needs Table, Resource Allocation Table. Every step along the recovery pathway is monitored by the DCM and the supervisor. Monitoring includes follow-up with clients on recovery steps, documenting each decision and action, keeping accurate and current case files, and assessing progress toward the recovery goals, including appropriate case closure. Cases close for many reasons, from successful completion to inability to locate resources. Supervisors should review every case prior to closure to assure a quality review of the case. DCMs then create a case closure summary. This process gives DCM agencies an opportunity to share the good news of community support and collaboration with each survivor through a closure letter. For a disaster case management process to succeed, coordination and support must be in place before training. Caring agencies, churches, and long-term recovery groups may reach out to address client recovery needs before systems are in place to ensure file integrity, a community-wide consistent approach, data management, and, most particularly, referral and funding mechanisms. Engaging in recovery partnership before systems are in place to protect confidentiality and equitable treatment before resources have been identified and harnessed will further frustrate and disappoint survivors, dashing hope by reaching out before solutions are in place. All DCMs need support and supervision. The more DCMs there are, the more important supervision becomes. How do survivors and DCMs connect? To prevent duplication and survivor anxiety, a DCM coordination system should be established. Once a long-term recovery begins to develop and establishes a DCM committee, the community can relax and agencies should step away from soliciting clients. A well-developed DCM approach assures that supervisors or coordinators are making assignments based on priorities and DCM abilities. After survivors have been screened so that needs and resources are a match, supervisors then assign and oversee DCM work to assure client progress and consistency. Report the statistical work of DCMs to the LTRG and provide ongoing training and DCM case review. Supervisors importantly assure client success 
by supporting the self-care needs of DCMs. Supervisors may be a great source of knowledge for LTRGs. Since DCMs work so closely with clients, systemic injustice and hidden vulnerabilities identified by DCMs and reported to supervisors can become an opportunity for advocacy and community awareness. Disaster case management cannot succeed without the supporting arms of all long-term recovery functions. Communities often expect that their work is done once they identify a DCM coordination system and hire or train DCMs. In truth, DCMs can't function without resources and funding priorities identified, volunteer hosting and management ready to maximize the use of donated funds, and construction coordination and supervision in place, as well as support systems such as data management, administration, and fiscal accounting. To send DCMs out to engage with survivors without establishing how they will help will further frustrate survivors who will see DCMs as a promise that recovery begins now. Because each client's needs are specific to the disaster, the community in which the disaster occurred, and the particular client family, DCMs address specific recovery needs. Charity is not the goal. Survivor recovery is the goal. Thus, not every survivor needs the same resources and DCMs work toward an equitable response. There are four primary models long-term recovery groups consider for disaster case management coordination. Autonomous, in which various agencies offer disaster case management to clients, they operate independently. Coordination happens through a strong disaster case management subcommittee of the long-term recovery group to standardize criteria for case submission. A cooperative or collaborative model happens when two or more agencies provide case management in a coordinated fashion. Again, a strong disaster case management committee determines strategies and service priorities and assigns cases by geography, specialty, or capacity. In some instances, agencies second or offer the services of some or all of their existing staff to the long-term recovery. The fourth model, though there is cost involved, puts the LTRG at the helm and in control of disaster case management policies and procedures. This may be a particularly useful model for low-impact rural community recovery groups. Again, the LTRG DCM subcommittee will take responsibility for coordination, structure, and support. Agencies may pool funds and hire disaster case managers to work directly for the long-term recovery group, which assures consistency, coordination, and oversight. The benefit from the first three models is that they are, essentially, free to the LTRG. Coordination of gifted DCMs requires a long-term recovery and a clear understanding of its mission and the scope of services it will offer. Disaster case managers demonstrate a commitment to caring and compassion for all people. Each survivor is treated with respect and dignity without judgment or discrimination. There is every reason to trust survivors who are often recounting their situation while grappling with shock because DCMs will only act on the truth they have built with each family by establishing a partnership of mutual respect. DCMs believe that all people have inherent dignity and worth, all people. To that end, DCMs perform their responsibility with integrity, assuring clients that their rights and privacy are treated ethically and confidentially. Holistic client recovery is based on client relationships with family, friends, and faith. DCMs recognize that human relationships are integral to hope and healing. In the best attempt to help people, even caring and compassionate partners can do harm. As tempting as it is to solve problems for survivors, DCMs recognize that recovery must be in the hands of each survivor family. Even the arrival of a caring helper can look like a promise that recovery is on the way. DCMs cannot promise anything except to do their job faithfully and well because survivors often judge themselves harshly for their failure to prevent the disaster that happened to their family, DCMs will not add to their grief by appearing to judge their previous or current decisions. A DCM-client partnership 
honors the healthy boundaries that prevent conflicts of interest and over-involvement. DCMs are the best kind of friend, the one who does not offer pity but celebrates and affirms every courageous step. Good stewardship by DCMs helps by maximizing client resources and community referrals so that the possibility of recovery for all in the community is exponentially increased. It's important for the DCMs to recognize and acknowledge the psychological impact of disasters on people and communities. Those who have faced the devastation of a natural disaster may despair or feel guilt if others had more damage. They may be in shock and unable to participate fully in recovery planning. They may suffer every time the weather worsens or an anniversary becomes a painful reminder of loss. They may be so overwhelmed that they can't engage or assist DCMs to take the first brave steps of recovery. After the community response and energy wanes, struggling through the days after a disaster may seem to survivors like a long walk uphill in quicksand that threatens them and pulls them back into a deep pit. It is difficult for many to move forward with recovery while in the throes of grief. Loss of community and other relationships, employment, and crisis of the spirit affect physical health as well. Building trust can be a slow process, and DCMs recognize that each survivor experiences the disaster uniquely and embraces recovery differently. The role of the DCM is to recognize the potholes that trip survivors in their recovery so that they don't push too hard or expect too little but affirm every possible step. The trust relationship that caring DCMs build can serve as a springboard for clients to develop trust with others and reestablish relationships with family, community, and God that may have been broken by the impact of disaster on their lives. Families relate best to advocates who seek to understand their lives, community, and culture. Just as the best long-term recovery groups mirror the community with membership from each cultural group, so do the best DCM strategies reflect the community in which they work. Striving to hear with the ears of familiarity, disaster case managers work to find reassuring ways to listen with culturally sensitive hearts. Both hired and volunteer DCMs should conduct the kind of internal assessment that will help them identify their own preconceptions and cultural assumptions that could impede a client's successful recovery. Disasters, small and large, need supporting partners in order for communities to recover. Many of the most experienced disaster response agencies are voluntary or faith-based organizations. In 1970, National Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster, that's National VOAD, was formed by many of these organizations in order to maximize resources, prevent the duplication of effort, and share best practices. This all-volunteer group of over 100 organizations develops common standards and principles, which are recognized within the disaster response sector under the organization's four C's, collaboration, cooperation, communication, and coordination. National VOAD's points of consensus give guidance to communities on ways to work sensitively and cooperatively. States and U.S. territories have VOAD organizations that meet regularly, even when the winds and waters are calm, to develop capacity for when disasters strike. One of the most active subcommittees within National VOAD is the Disaster Case Management Committee. Its online resources, available at nvoad.org include DCM points of consensus and DCM guidance. Both are required reading for DCMs. One of the most experienced and dependable partners in a federally declared disaster is the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Made up of numerous programs developed under the Stafford Act, FEMA's mission is to support communities when they are overwhelmed by disaster. The law determines what FEMA can do, but states and local communities decide which of FEMA's programs to accept. Because FEMA's programs are managed and operated by the state, and often with matching dollars, recovery programs available even in a federal declaration may vary from disaster to disaster. The sequence of disaster assistance outlined in the Stafford Act allows FEMA and voluntary agencies to partner in ways that will prevent the duplication of benefits and efforts and will maximize recovery. 
A thorough understanding of FEMA and other federal and state programs is mandatory by DCMs. In fact, DCMs must be fluent in all local, state, federal, and nonprofit resources in order to clear away the inevitable confusion survivors face when attempting to assess help. In 2005, the federal government was faced with the question of what to do with dollars given by the nations of the world in response to Hurricane Katrina. Even tiny Bangladesh sent a million dollars. The solution was to create, under the leadership of the United Methodist Committee on Relief, that's UMCOR, a consortium of funded disaster case management agencies. Katrina Aid Today provided disaster case managers for Katrina survivors wherever in the nation they were. The program's success encouraged to build on the program to develop a federal program of disaster case management, which states could request in large-scale disasters. After several pilot programs, the federal government's disaster case management program, often called the DCMP, has been deployed by numerous disasters from Florida to Louisiana to New England to Texas. DCMs are hired by agencies that successfully meet the government's requirements. Many are agencies at the state level. Not all of them are national VOAD member agencies. One of the roles within FEMA's Stafford Act responsibilities is the role of voluntary agency liaisons. They're often called VALs. With one foot in the government and one foot in the community, VALs straddle the conversation, helping local long-term recovery groups develop and messaging to FEMA what is happening within the community. VALs often serve as translators, explaining federal programs to the community and communicating to federal bureaucracies the point of view within the affected areas. This overview of disaster case management is intended to help you gain an understanding of the DCM role in recovery and to underscore what an invaluable asset DCMs provide as they link survivors with recovery resources and provide options for recovery. It's our hope that you have gained an understanding of DCM that includes comprehensive and holistic recovery. Disaster case managers understand that there are many places of brokenness after disaster and that broken homes are only one piece of recovery. Please visit nvoad.org for disaster case management resources. Members of National Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster, National VOAD, with expertise in disaster case management, have provided excellent resources for communities to better understand DCM. As an early member of National VOAD, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, that's UMCOR, looked at case management in a social services context and considered what it might look like when people experience disasters. It's our conviction that disaster case management is the best opportunity we have to help survivors rebuild their lives with dignity and to move forward with resilience so that the next time trouble comes, they'll have the tools they need to recover. Disaster case management is not about fixing anything or anyone. It's about empowering people to find their own way forward. We're grateful for the experience and wisdom gained over decades of interaction with caring partners all over the nation who seek to be present with survivors of disaster in ways that may enhance their recovery. Thank you for your willingness to consider how you, your agency, or your community can support those who've been devastated by disaster. UMCOR believes that hope looks just like you.